sometimes you can be feeling a certain way or thinking about something in a certain way and someone will say to you, well, it's all in your head. And that's not really helpful, is it? Because you know that so many things start right there in your head. Even your health can be impacted by the things going on in your head. And so many other things from how you succeed or what you eat or what you decide to do, all of those things are very much in your head. And that's why as a writing coach who has helped so many authors go from idea to published and from aspiring writer to successful author, I like to address not only writing craft, the information that you need to write and publish your novel, but also I like to talk about mindset. It's one of the three main pillars of my practice as a writing coach because when you don't have the right mindset, success is almost impossible. And when you have the right mindset, I truly believe that it can transform everything. It actually addresses all the other things, the motivation, the learning, all of that can happen or is more likely to happen with the right mindset. There are several mindset mistakes that can hold authors back from reaching their full potential. And so on today's episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, I wanted to address all of those, ranging from perfectionism to self-doubt, fear of failure and rejection, comparison, lack of discipline, overwhelm, and a fixed mindset. I'm going to be delving into each one of these because last week, if you listened in, I was talking about the writing craft mistakes that can hold you back in your writing career. And now I'm talking about the mindset mistakes because with the mindset mistakes that you have, everything's in your head, but it feels so real. You are literally responsible for holding yourself back. Being a successful author is not easy but it's that much easier when you're not standing in your own way. And as a writing coach, I often see people who are doing that very thing. And the worst part is they don't even realize what they're doing. So this episode is going to be short and sweet, but it's going to be an eye-opener for you if you've been actually holding yourself back. And here's the funny, sneaky little thing about some of these mindset mistakes. They actually are masquerading as sanity. They're masquerading as self-protection. They're masquerading as, you know, good things or things that, you know, so many times it's good to be cautious, it's good to be safe, things like that. So let's talk about why these mindset mistakes happen and why they are so pervasive and so sneaky and how you can see what's really going on so that you can try to kind of adopt a much healthier mindset when it comes to your writing, which will lead, I promise, to so much more writing success. Let's dive right in on these mindset mistakes I don't want you to be making anymore. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. Hello and welcome to the How to Be an Author podcast. I am your host, writing coach Karenna Akavane, PhD. Listen, it took me a while to go from being an aspiring writer to being an author who is more successful than I had imagined long ago when I started out, and also who I very much believe this of myself is growing exponentially in my growing career, I have started to single out some really great hacks and formulas when it comes to succeeding as an author. And by succeeding, this can mean so many different things, right? So many times we have different definitions of success. And many times I think we limit ourselves in what we view as our potential success, we think, no, no, I don't want to dream too big because that's not realistic. And that's a mindset issue in and of itself. But in my years as a writing coach, I have pinpointed those super effective formulas that actually do 
measurably help you to move forward in your writing career, whether it's with your writing craft or whether it's with your publication, whether it's about growing on social media or even reaching out to agents. I have kind of Create things where you're not spending extra time on the things that don't matter, and instead, you're actually focusing on what moves the needle and pushes you forward. So that's why I wanted to talk about perfectionism first, because I think that this is one of the most insidious writing mindset mistakes, because striving for perfection. Wow, that sounds pretty good, right? It sounds like you're trying to put out your best work. It sounds like you super respect your readers and you want them to read something that's really wonderful and perfect. But you know that no one's ever perfect. And you know that striving for perfection can prevent you from ever finishing your work or sharing your work. And that's why so many times we have to say that finished is better than perfect because one of them actually is out there in the world, getting attention, gaining readers, moving you forward in your career. So I would say that this perfectionism, I see it so many times. And it's really hard to convince a writer who has their heart set on being as perfect as they can possibly be. They think when I tell them, hey, you know what, let's just focus on progress and iteration They think to themselves sometimes, you know what? What does she know? She's not a good writing coach if she's telling me this. And that's not so, at least not in my opinion. And maybe there are different kinds of writing coaches. Maybe there is the one that tries to get you to that perfection in your craft. But for me, I like to, instead of focusing on perfection, I like to focus on doing the things that are actually going to move you forward. So which things do readers actually care about? They care about a great plot that moves forward. They care about an immersive setting. They care about characters that they can really get attached to and identify with. They care about, you know, just basically this world of a novel that they can get excited about. So all of that is much, much better than creating something that's perfect from a literary point of view, for example. Also, when it comes to your website, Sure, yeah, we all dream of having that perfect website with, you know, these just amazing moving parts and super sophisticated and everything else. But really, in reality, what your website needs is a bio of you, something about your books, and a way to gather email addresses from your readers so that you can send them emails once in a while. Like, that's what you need. That perfect website might never happen, but The website that's good enough is something that you can probably run yourself. Same goes for social media. So many authors I've heard from hesitate before they ever post their first thing because they're waiting to be more perfect. They're waiting to look better so that they can post a reel or a TikTok video. They're waiting until they have their perfect book cover out, all of these things. Now, I don't want you to be posting absolute crap because that's not attracting any readers, but I don't want you to be waiting so long that you end up having nothing at the end of the day because that's what perfectionism does to you. So try to look at, am I feeling like I need to be perfect? And start to focus on, okay, how can I move forward and have that MVP, right? That minimum value proposition. And I often will help my writers who are perfectionists to do some little writing hacks that bypass that desire in their brain for the perfection so that you end up getting something that you can actually edit. And this is also why perfectionism happens usually in a vacuum. When you actually present your work to somebody else, they can tell you themselves whether it's good enough to put out there or whether you need to work on it more. So usually, here's the funny thing, we have huge blind spots when it comes to our work. So you might think that you're working towards perfectionism when in fact, you just keep rewriting it and making it different not better. So being objective or having somebody else's eyes on it is going to help you to stop circling in the search for perfection, because this is something that can really waste 
a lot of your time. And when I say that you should be focusing on progress and iteration, I'm talking about, hey, maybe this book wasn't perfect. Maybe the next book will be better and the next book after that. I find that my own books, as I've finally started publishing more and more frequently instead of sitting on it for 10 years like I did with my first book, I find that my writing is improving in a huge way because you learn lessons from not just rewriting the same chapter 20 times. You learn those lessons from actually writing a book to the end and publishing it and getting the feedback and the reviews, all of that is necessary to have that overall view of what it takes to write a good book. Now, let's talk about the next little mindset mistake that people make, uh, the self-doubt. You know, whether this is, you know, some people tell me that they have imposter syndrome. And I'm like, well, you don't really have imposter syndrome because imposter syndrome is when you get to a degree of success that you don't think you deserved. So if you are not even writing your book and, you know, because you're scared to do it, that's not imposter syndrome. You should be so lucky to have that literary success and then be able to say, did I really deserve it? right? But when you're sitting there wondering whether you should even be writing at all, that is self-doubt. And this is the thing that leads to procrastination. This leads to abandonment of projects, you know, and it's super important to build that confidence. And I know how easily your confidence can be torn down by a single bad review or a single online troll, But try to realize that nobody's perfect. Again, there's no such thing as perfect. And remember that, you know, you're going to be learning and growing and support from peers or support from a good writing coach can help you to overcome self-doubt. And here's one thing. The more you focus on your writing, the more you learn, the more you iterate, the less doubt you're going to have because you start to be so much more objective about what is good and what isn't. I promise. I think that at first when you're working in a vacuum and you haven't really seen a project to completion, it is really hard to be discerning about what actually is working and what is not. When I say to my authors, kill your darlings, sometimes the darlings are the things that they love the most and those things inevitably work the least within their work because they're still novices at this. After a while, after all the progress and all of the practice, when you've been publishing for a while and you've been learning, you're going to be able to start being a lot less doubtful when it comes to what's working and what's not. So this is the thing where I just say, you've got to trust me that you are going to end up being better and better as you go. But honestly, I truly believe, sincerely believe that any writer who has dreamed of being an author and who wants to do this thing, I believe that you can produce a work that's going to be compelling and that's going to be readable and that's going to find readership. You can find an authentic voice that is going to be awesome, but some of us will have to work harder than others. That's a thing. Some of us have more challenges than others. Some of us started off with a lower degree of education, or maybe we started off with processing differences, or we've got ADHD, or we've got, you know, just really difficult situations. And yeah, your abilities might not be at the same level as that other authors right now. But you know what? Your abilities can grow. That's the problem when people start with a fixed mindset, and they're like, oh, I'm not as good as at so-and-so. Well, you're going to learn and grow. So stop doubting yourself. And trust me when I tell you, you can do this. I promise. Now, another huge mindset issue that happens with so many authors, and this is just human nature, it's that fear of failure and fear of rejection. And this rears its head in so many different ways. And I think that probably the thing that helped me most um, when it came to, and also I'm going to roll in this fear of self-promotion, that also kind of rolls into the same thing because when you're putting yourself out there, that's when people can reject you, right? If you're not putting yourself out there, how can anyone reject you because you're not out in the world, right? And it's a human thing that rejection is terrifying because it's 
really intrinsically linked to survival with our ancestors. So when you're being rejected, that can be a really scary thing. And writing is full of rejection. Whether it's being rejected by agents, by publishers, maybe you've got a producer was looking at something you did and they ended up turning it down, or maybe, you know, maybe you didn't even get that far and you got a really bad review and all of that's horrible. But embracing failure as a natural part of the writing process is crucial. Listen, rejection is an opportunity for growth. And as long as you persevere, again, you're going to be learning from your mistakes And little by little, you're going to be getting some, you know, acceptance as you go. You're going to be getting some glowing reviews as you go. But guess what? That rejection's always going to be there. Right now, as we speak, I am sitting on a manuscript that's with one agent and then with a producer. And I'm pretty sure that at least one of those is going to reject me. Even though I've come this far, even though this is not my first rodeo, and does it suck less Every time you get rejected, I don't know, it might actually add up, but I'm not really afraid of it anymore. You know, I've really learned to be objective about it because here's the thing. If I wasn't putting myself out there, I wouldn't get rejected. So being rejected is almost like it's almost honorable because you actually at least tried. That's so important. You know, there is no, like if you think that it's superior to never fail because you never tried, well, I don't like your mindset at all, and I don't think you're going to get very far thinking that way. So keep that in mind, that rejection and failure are signs that you've actually been doing the work. And also, here's the thing, in terms of putting yourself out there, yes, putting yourself out there is really scary, especially that some people, especially online, they can be real jerks. And so you always feel like, oh my gosh, I'm putting myself out there and I am literally putting myself out there for the firing squad. It's a very scary thing to do. But what really helped me was when I had a shop. So I worked in retail. You can listen to the episode. I've got two different episodes on this very subject that I'm talking about in this little section of the podcast. I've got an episode about fear. And I think that's a really important one for you to listen to. But also I have one about how running a retail store helped my writing career. And I know that it sounds like those are two completely different things. But listen, the sooner you learn that writing is a business and that you need to be a professional and that your book is a product, the better you're going to be at kind of disassociating your personal self from it and seeing it as work that you are doing and promoting. And when you are working hard, you deserve to have that work put out there. And who better to put it out there than you? So it's not personal rejection. It's just that you haven't yet found the right audience or the right client for your product. So when you think of it that way, I think it makes that rejection or that failure a little bit easier. You're just going to iterate again. And this is also where I say, again, I've got these wonderful formulas for making it more likely that you not be rejected. I've got both ways of writing a query letter that's very intriguing for you know most agents. And also I've got something about how you do research before you write a book to know more about your market, know more about your potential readers so that you don't go off on a tangent writing something that's going to be, you know, super weird that nobody wants. But at the same time, don't be afraid of that either because, you know, some of our best writers have forged new paths. Now, it's not an easy way to do that, right? But that can be a really, really compelling thing to do as well. So it really depends on how much work you're willing to do to be heard if you're in a completely different genre now or you've invented something completely new. And, you know, you definitely want to look at what's happening out there, but you also want to stand out on your own because here's the next part of the writing mindsets that can trip people up. It's comparison. Now, I would have almost put comparison first on this list, frankly, because comparison is the thief of joy in every aspect of your life, every aspect, from where you live to how you live to where you're going on vacation to who your friends are to what you're doing, you know, to what your abilities are to how you look to you know, all of that. If you compare, you're going to feel inadequate in some way. 
Like no matter what, no matter how great you are, no matter how far you've gotten, no matter which goals you've hit, if you constantly compare yourself to other authors or other people, especially people who are in the public eye, you start to feel inadequate and that comparison can be demoralizing. And here's the thing that you need to remember. The people you are comparing yourself to are the ones who have reached a certain level of fame. They've reached a certain level with their writing and their writing career where you actually know who they are. They're on your radar. Do you know which percentage of writers actually get to that level? You're comparing yourself to the top 1% of writers. So stop doing that. Yeah, I know that what I said might be scary because you're thinking, oh, so those are the odds of success. But as I always say, the odds of success become so much higher when you actually do the work. They become so much higher when you actually put yourself out there and create this polished product that people want. So stop comparing yourself and focus on celebrating your unique voice, your unique book, your unique accomplishments, and focus on personal growth. So I'm not talking about growth that makes you be more like this or that author. I'm talking about personal growth that takes you to be what you were meant to be. And that way, nobody can compare themselves to you because you are your own thing. And that's pretty awesome. So in terms of problem mindsets, you know, that need to constantly compare, like you're going online and you're like, oh my God, why does this writer have more followers than I do? Or you're looking at the bestseller list and you're like, oh my God, why does she have four bestsellers on the list at the same time? You know, how did she do that? I'll never be able to do that. Well, you won't if you keep dwelling on the negative. So personal growth can be so much slower than you thought. Growth in your career can be much harder than you thought. But when you put in the effort, it happens. Again, I have started to really look at what are the things that move the needle forward when I'm looking, for example, at book sales. Like, yeah, I'm not selling thousands and thousands of books every day, but you know, there's some things that I can do where I then see that like, wow, that really moved the needle. I sold a lot more books on this day versus that day. You know, what are those things? And all of this is in my course from Idea to Published in Six Months. I really give you all of those formulas, which even one at a time are going to help you to move forward so much more exponentially than you would have without them. But also when you put all of those together, you're really getting somewhere. This is something that I know you can replicate if you stick to doing what I said and if you really adopt it and absorb it. And the biggest part of that is the mindset. Because if you're half-heartedly doing the things that I suggest, but you're not drinking the Kool-Aid and you're not putting your mindset where it's supposed to be, you're either never going to actually be doing the things 100%, you're not going to be putting yourself out there as much as you should be, or you're going to be reverting to what you were before. Your discipline, for example, certainly will not be able to kind of keep at the level where it needs to be. And so this is another mindset issue, but really, I think that this is, you know, lack of discipline that comes from so many different reasons. Like if you are comparing and you see somebody else who seems to have it all, you are not going to be very motivated to do the work because you're thinking that they have this charmed journey and let me just dwell on them and waste time looking at them instead of doing the work myself. Also, if you have a fear of failure or rejection, or if you have self-doubt where you don't even believe that this thing can actually happen, how in the world can you be disciplined because you don't believe you can do it, right? And I often say this, that, you know, your brain is not stupid. So if you're telling your brain, listen, there's almost zero chance of me succeeding at this endeavor. Like I'm not going to actually manage to write a book because, you know, reason A, B, and C. Why in the world would your brain help you to be disciplined? Why in the world would your brain tell you, hey, you know what? Instead of watching that TV show or going shopping with your friends or going and, you know, eating at a restaurant or whatever, instead of doing that, why don't you write? 
Why don't you delay the gratification and do the work instead of doing something fun? Why would your brain say that when it knows deep down inside because you told it that you're not going to succeed anyway? Your brain's like, hey, let's do the smart thing. Let's just do what you were going to do anyway. Since you weren't going to succeed at writing, let's just go watch that TV show now. Let's just forget building the website right now. And that way we can go to the beach instead. So that lack of discipline is so deep-seated, it really comes from a lack of belief in yourself, and it comes from so many problem mindsets. But, you know, the discipline feels like it's this independent mindset in a way. They're like, oh, how do you manage to stay on track? How do you keep your work habits? How do you not procrastinate? You know what? The truth is everybody procrastinates at some point. Everybody has their highs and lows when it comes to their work habits. But when you convince yourself that the discipline is worth it, when you convince yourself that you can write this book, you can publish this book, you can sell this book, you are more able to establish a routine, set specific goals, and hold yourself accountable. And all of this feeds upon itself. As you start getting the rewards for the work that you did, you start craving that. That becomes your dopamine hit. So for me now, like, you know, it used to be that if you're posting something on social media or you're watching a TV show, like that's your dopamine that you're getting when you're scrolling. Well, imagine now that you are checking your Amazon KDP bookshelf and you're seeing book sales or you're looking at your TikTok account or your Instagram account and you're seeing growth, that becomes your new dopamine hit. And I think that that probably feeds your discipline a lot. However, you also need to be careful that there are ups and downs in everybody's career. There are ups and downs in your growth. There are ups and downs in sales. And so you can't let that be the only thing that's motivating you, right? But And that's why also sometimes having a writing coach that you see every week, they can help you to hold yourself accountable. Because again, I'm not going to 100% hold you accountable. It's you talking to me and me giving you goals and then you doing the work so that you can be disciplined. But I want to help to get you to believe in yourself. And believe me, I wouldn't be saying this if I thought that there was any chance that anyone listening to this podcast today was not capable of writing a book and publishing a book and being a successful author. I fundamentally believe that you're able to do it. And I don't think everybody does think that way, but you might think that I'm the naive one. I think that they're the ones who aren't being realistic because they're being these gatekeepers in a stupid way. I think that we should have a diversity of voices. And so even if you didn't get the education, even if you didn't have the background, even if you have the learning differences, you can do this and we can find a way that will help you to achieve your goals. Now, there might be some workarounds, and this is another thing with this mindset where it's like, oh, if I'm doing it this way, I'm not a real writer. If I'm taking shortcuts, I'm not a real writer. If it's easy at all for me, I'm not a real writer. And I had a client who said something devastating once where she'd been trying to write the same book over and over and over again. And I usually, you know, can always find a way to move people forward pretty fast. But this one was really, really testing me. And at one point she was saying, well, I would have written such and such a genre, but it's always been so easy for me. And so I knew that I shouldn't do that because that's cheating. And so that's where we were able to have the jumping off point where I was able to say, uh, no, the, the easy part is because that's in alignment with who you are as an author. And that means that you're finding your authentic voice in that genre. And that's the way we need to go. So sometimes it's important to realize that Those things that are a little easy or that are fun, that doesn't mean it's cheating. That means that you're actually heading in the right direction. So always listen to those voices and don't listen to the BS when people are telling you that one genre is better than another. There are so many deep-seated, interesting reasons, both psychological, sociological, gendered, all of these things for why some genres are looked down upon by some people, but the readers say otherwise right? If you're looking at fantasy and romance, for example, and saying, oh, they're not real literature, really? Tell that to the millions of people 
who read those genres and love them. Tell that to the authors who are working in these genres and actually breaking boundaries and writing really kick-ass stories. So you need to really realize that so many of the stories we tell ourselves or that people tell us or so many of the things that people say, they're just kind of blindly repeating and you need to start thinking about, is this actually true? Because I don't think it is, right? So stop believing in these fixed things of the fixed mindset. Stop believing that writing talent is innate. And if you don't have it right now, you don't have it. Stop believing that if you're not at a certain level of success now, you're never going to get there. Stop thinking that you're supposed to know everything right now. Stop thinking that a single failure means that it's not meant to be. If you can have a growth mindset, you'll keep learning persevering, you'll be more resilient, and you will continue improving and encountering more and more success until you eventually become the author that you were meant to be. So I think that that growth mindset is such a beautiful thing to have. I do have more episodes about this growth mindset on this podcast. So if you just go back to the podcast page and you can look and see all of the different episodes that you might have missed in the past, because when you are trying to learn, grow, and change, any way of doing that is really, really helpful. Whether that's listening to a podcast episode that is kind of talking you through some of the points in your writing journey, or whether it is taking a workbook and working on that. And that's in my budget solution, my DIY author. You can be doing that for not very much at all. And then also you've got my masterclass from Idea to Published in Six Months, which has a whole section on mindset, on transforming your mindset. It's easier said than done, but it is absolutely possible. So I don't want you to think that if right now your mindset kind of sucks, that's not going to change. You really do need somebody on the outside to remind you that it is possible. That's super important. So surround yourself with the right people. And, you know, remember that I'm here for you, your writing coach. You can reach out via email, corena at spalmorum.com, or just go to my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com, or online courses for writers.com for all of that information and all of those resources that are going to get you closer and closer to the writing success that you have dreamed of. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to being with you next week on the How to Be an Author podcast. If you have any pressing writing-related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com. 